So, hi again, my friends. Uh, I want to begin with uh, uh, saying that I'm a relatively new guy in the Ruby world. So my first Ruby code appeared uh, less than two years ago. I came here from Pythonic world, and I came to Pythonic world from bloody, bloody enterprise world, and uh, I still survived. <laughs> so you guys have really comfortable place to live and work in, which I appreciate. And it, co it could be sound pathetic, but I really, you know, like to stand here in front of you and talking, and uh, it's a big honor for me. So thanks for the opportunity to do this. <laughs> Thank you. So, okay, let's start with a short introduction. Who am I? Uh, first of all, yeah, I'm a weird-sounding Russian guy, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is obviously true. Uh, I'm also an armchair guitar, guitar pro player, and uh, although I do not perform publicly, I really like to do that thing. So I'm also a son, a husband, and a father. And uh, mostly, I'm a yak shaver at Rapid River Software for the last one and a half year. Uh, so uh, while I uh, was learning to shave yaks with uh, the team of experienced developers, I really thankfully uh, to all the guys from Rapid River Software because they really taught me to be cool and act cool in every critical situation. So uh, here I am, acting cool as hell while shooting dangerous rapids. <laughs> Actually, I just fell asleep. <laughs> so, uh, on one of our projects, we had a challenge, uh, so we, which can be basically explained by the words that we had a, about four source databases, which contains uh, web events from the front end of different sites and uh, some related information, and we had to organize the ETL data flows and processes and uh, post calculation processes and put all the data to the source database which uh, called here as a web statistics database so we had to find the solution we had to implement some magic driven thing with all the unicorns and rainbows inside and uh, we came to the epo of hard decision because uh, we had no idea about the you know underneath platform uh, yeah what uh, should I say about hard decisions? So uh, after uh, all the hesitation, we decided to go with a yeah Rails application. Uh, why Rails? Well, because we're worth it, definitely, right? <laughs> so I'm just kidding. Rails because uh, there are a lot of guys in Rapid River Software. It's not me, uh, but a lot of them can really cook Rails in a perfect way. So we decided to go with that. And uh, yeah, I have this uh, slight version for Malaysia. Thanks, team, for the idea. So it's a Rails app, Canla, because we're in Malaysia. And uh, OK, everyone knows uh, how do you know, usual uh, race application, ordinary race application for the single database looks like. We have a models and app folder. We have a database YAML file in config folder. We have a DB folder with uh, all the things set it in, like all the migration stuff, seeds file, and schema, right? So uh, you all should know that, right? But what about Rails application with multiple DBs? We really felt ourselves as a thumbleweed over the road because uh, no one has no idea of what should we do. So as a team of experienced developers, we decided to go with the most obvious way to solve this problem and use Missix box. So we called him Mr. Misix, and he said, hey, Mr. Misix, look at me. And we asked him, hey, Mr. Misix, could you please explain us how should we do, uh, how should we do handle uh, multiple databases in our Rails application? And he said, OK, uh, as long as it's not to teach you play golf, <laughs> it works for me. So uh, here are the advices of Mr. Misix. So first of all, he advised us to manage database connection properly and uh, organize them the way that each database connection information should be stored in a dedicated config in the config database db name yaml file each uh, database should have its own config so uh, the next point is uh, we should initialize db configs at the uh, in rails application initialization step so basically uh, here is the piece of code from uh, our databases initializer uh, which simply contains the, you know, reading all the configs for 
all databases we are interested at, and uh, check if they has a configs for a given environment. I'm sorry for the bunch of code. Uh, the next thing, uh, we should choose a default database for our Rails application because uh, although we have a different databases, there should be one of them for holding all the you know, Rails app related things. So uh, for that purpose, we have a module uh, in our app, which name is DB, which has embedded uh, select current database. So this is its uh, short implementation. Uh, what it uh, does is simply change Rails application config paths. So this is it. Uh, next thing, we should organize the B files. So uh, each database related stuff should uh, take place in its own folder inside DB folder. So we have organized it the way I just shown into this slide. So we have a code folder with uh, functions and views, all the things uh, that stored into the database. We have a seeds folder for all the seed files, and seeds.rb just uh, uh, includes all of them. And uh, migrate folders and structure folders, so this should be clear. Next thing, we should organize uh, our models properly, so uh, each database should have its own folder for its models. And also, we should have a base abstract model for each database. So this is how it looks like. Uh, in model for database foodb, we have a class, uh, abstract class, uh, which simply establish connection to the proper database, and we should, uh, you know, inherit all the models for that database from this class. Next, uh, for our comfortable usage of application, we should create a migration generators for each database. So uh, we could simply use uh, them the way I shown at the bottom of the slide like Rails generate, FooDB migration, blah, blah, blah. And it will put the migration file to the right folder inside the DB structure. So also we should set, create a set of rake tasks for each database, like the standard ones, uh, drop, create, mi mi migrate, reset. So all the things that we are supposed to do with databases, right? So here we did the trick. Uh, we simply uh, changed. Uh, we simply change the database uh, for our Rails application and invoke all the Rails tasks for, uh, for the default database from the you know, single DB approach. Well, you can customize uh, each method for each database in the way that will work for you. So yeah, and uh, the last thing to do is just to begin to use that uh, rake tasks and uh, be quite happy because this is the final step and from this point of time, everything should work. At least everything works for us. So uh, uh, this is the things that remains out of scope of my today talk, because it should be a blazing fast. Uh, first of all, it's uh, DB-specific things, uh, uh, which means that we probably have to custom customize some rake tasks for Oracle case, for MySQL case, and so on and so forth with all of them, you know, with all of the specific stuff for each database. Uh, we also have a rake tasks for uh, managing with the table partitions, uh, because uh, we heavily use partitions in PostgreSQL, because uh, we have a really huge databases. And uh, we also have implemented wrapper uh, over PG copy tool, which uh, implemented as a bulk loader which works blazing fast because uh, copy itself works blazing fast. And uh, also we have implemented the concepts of DB code versioning. So uh, we have uh, migrations for uh, each stored procedure, for each stored function, and for each view. And uh, it's just uh, the thing about you know, uh, code organization. So if you will be interested in some of these topics, just find me, say hi, and I will try to explain you all the things that I know. So uh, this is it, and yeah, the thing that I should mention that uh, is not in this presentation, while working on this project, uh, we, uh, with another developers, uh, decided to make a gem which could help you to set up multiple databases with your Rails project. So currently we are on the early stages of making this gem, but be sure when it's done, we will advertise it as much as possible because uh, it really worked well for us, and if it if it will help at least one other guy, it would be just perfect and we will be 
happier. So uh, this is my credentials. Uh, the Nick history is, uh, you know, is uh, like an elder one. So don't ask me. I know that uh, 404 stands for not found. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And uh, it was a lightning talk. It was uh, nice to be here. And uh, after every lightning, it comes the thunder. So let's make some thunder, guys, for all of you, for the Ruby community, because you're really awesome. And I'm really happy to be a part of it. Thank you.